we are going back to Aurelium in September and I am very excited to talk about our TBR for which books we need for these classes. If you have never heard of the Aurelium Readathon, I will have G at Book Roast's channel linked down below with her introduction video. And so if this is your first time hearing about it, but it sounds kind of cool to create your own D&D style character where you get to go to a magical school for whatever career you choose from, because there are, I think, are over 20 careers you can choose from and so many class options. She has gone just above and beyond creating this world with lore and classes and every semester it just gets a little bit more. It is so cool. So I do highly recommend you join. Don't feel like you have to wait though to join because if you haven't done spring semester, she said it's perfectly fine to pretend you have and create your character and just roll into our fall autumn equinox classes. Without further ado though, we're going to talk about what books I need to read so that Kalicia can finish her second year at the Aurelium Academy. Autumn Equinox is a bit different than the Spring Equinox as some classes require you to get different specific grade levels completed. Thus, some of mine I have to read more books than the others. That's going to be interesting. Some classes you have O for Ordinary, Q for Qualified, or D for Distinguished, and it will let you know per job de calling description what you need for each class in autumn. First up, we will start with lore because this is the first one I will probably be reading in the month. And for this one, I need to get to Qualify. So for my Ordinary, it says read a vampire book. And I will be reading Lucy Undying? Yes, by Kirsten Wright White. This is a Dracula type story, but we should be following more so Lucy, who will be an eternal teenager because she was turned back in Dracula's like original time. And now though we are in modern times. I have not read too much of the description. I know that it is slightly sapphic and that it's tinged horror as well. But I really liked her last book that I read by her, so I'd requested this one. I am kind of hoping that the romance doesn't play too big of a part, that it does tinge more into Lucy's story herself. We shall see. So I'm going in mostly blind to this. Mostly blind. It is over 400 pages though. This list is chunky and I am nervous because of that, especially for ones that I don't have audio companions to. It always makes it take longer. Four. Qualified though in lore is regional interpretations. So a translated book and this one is going to be the shortest book on the list Because I was able to fill it with a manga I did think that I should get maybe a bind up But the library didn't have any of those and I had a ten year old trying to rush me through the process of looking So I didn't really get to look much if the library app though if I can find more of a bind up there Then we should go forward with that, but I decided to grab the promised neverland because there was a limited number of number ones for any of the manga that I was looking at. And I have seen season one of this series and I still need to watch season two for sure. But The Promised Neverland follows a group of orphans at this orphanage as they are told when they are adopted that they're going of course to their forever families. And this group of friends though, they are looking forward to the promise of getting adopted after they turn 12. I do believe 12 was the magic number and there's no one older than that there. Just they might discover something kind of dark and so we're gonna go into this. Maybe we're gonna cry. Probably not in the first book. It probably won't happen in the first little book but we'll find out. I can't say too much about it because I feel like it gives a twist away that doesn't come for a few episodes. Then the next easy one to knock out probably would be elemental studies because I only need an O for this one. And in that we are learning Gust of Longing and it's your favorite scent or on either the title, cover, or author name. This was the hardest book to pick though of the whole list. Even harder than the other one, which we will get to in a minute, but I was just, I did a thing. So this one was really hard and I could not come up with it because I don't know that I have a favorite scent or the ones closest I couldn't really it was hard to figure out something to go on the cover. So I was just like, okay, we're just going to go with the food. Food is awesome. Because I feel like my scents still probably change seasonally. But cookies, 
We love cookies. So this is a cozy, I think, not quite cozy. I think it was from before cozy was maybe a term. But it is a little mystery series called The Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder by Joanne Fluke. It's the first in the Hannah Swinson mystery, and it has recipes. I haven't actually heard that much about it. I've just seen a bajillion of these books at the store, the library, and I'm like, let's go for it. I've thought about it before. Let's just go it. Hannah already has her hands full trying to dodge her mother's attempts to marry her off while running the cookie jar, Lake Eden's most popular bakery. But once Ron LaSalle, the beloved bakery, the beloved delivery man from the cozy cow dairy is found murdered behind her bakery with Hannah's famous chocolate chip crunchies scattered around him. Her life just can't get any worse. Determined not to let her cookies get a bad reputation, she sets out to track down the killer. But if she doesn't watch her back, Hannah's sweet life may be get, get burned to a crisp. Chocolate. Okay. Finally. I found it. It's 310 pages. All of this is a bonus story, so we probably won't read that. But, yeah. 310 pages. Yay. Another large page count. And we are not even really into the large yet. Then another one that I only need one part for the class is Restoration in Ordinary Says Night Dew, a book with night sky on the cover. And I'm trying to do ones that I do own or the library. So Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. I heard a lot about this last year but, and I wanted to get it or read it. Obviously I got it. I wanted to read it but I haven't yet. And I don't even remember except for some reason it kept mentioning twilight i don't know a killer haunts a small southern town and two outcasts the preacher's daughter and the boy from the wrong side of the tracks hold the key to uncovering the truth mm -hmm. it takes place in bottom springs louisiana in a god-fearing town and her father is apparently a fire and brimstone holy fire baptist preacher mm -hmm. so i'm very interested don't know when i want to get to this one though because Probably not after the mystery, maybe between some of the fantasy. I don't know yet. But it has a moon and I think some stars. So this counts as nighttime on the cover. And this one is 355 pages. So another over 300. I will definitely be helping for, you know, the page count goal of the semester. Inscription, though, is by far the one that needs the most and is the most daunting as well. And for O, I need Art of Decipher, which is a title with all the letters of your first name. It wouldn't be so hard except for actually finding ones with G and um, M in the same cover did actually prove a little bit difficult. So I had two options. One would be The Redemption of Morgan Bright, which is a fiction thriller type where a woman goes into an insane asylum which by changing her name to find out what happened to her sister and slowly starts to lose more of her own personality and become this ultra person that she created and there's definitely something weird going on there so very interesting sounding and it is definitely the shorter option the library didn't have it though so it'd only be on audible from everand but then there was also this one that I've kind of been meaning to and I don't have another sci-fi on this so I kind of wanted to but yeah it's, it's large Morningstar by Pierce Brown which is the third one of the Red Rising trilogy it's the first part in the first trilogy before the time skip I think that happens and where things happen and I would really like to continue but it, the audiobook is like 20 something hours and um with the epilogue, it's uh, 518 pages. So I don't know, especially with what comes for D um, of inscription. So it's either going to be The Redemption of Morgan Bright, which would be easy. And I said I would wait till the end of the month to decide which one it was going to be. But I feel like I need to do it earlier because it is the first one I need to be able to have the other two actually even count. I'm confused and I don't know. The next one is Q and I needed ink pigmentation and for this one it had me spin a color wheel and to pick the title color and I got light blue and this is the only book I think I have with a light blue um, title. What? Yes, that I haven't like already read and that's Bewitching a Highlander by Roma Corden. 
This is a time travel book, I think. Uh, a healer in which Brina McRae spent years believing her parents were dead. After learning the truth, she sets out to rescue her father and runs into future clan chief Egan Dunbar. And their attraction to each other is from then head on, but their love risks everything for Brina's family and the future of the Dunbar clan. Okay, that doesn't say much. Maybe I should have read the back. It's not time travel. Never mind. Okay, but a healer witch and a warlord and it's part of the Scottish Highland Warriors novels. It came from Unplugged. And sure, I can get the audiobook to this one too at the library. It does have very pretty edges though that look very fall. It's still 90 degrees projected for the rest of this week and next week here. So it doesn't feel like autumn at all. And it probably won't until the end of September. False fall might come though. Hopefully, at least we'll get a week of false fall. Now, the one, the second hardest one to fill, and only because I actually did a thing. So this one is credit etiquette, where you go to a book by an author mentioned in, so you have to go to your last five star reads and then check what, if the author mentioned another author in their acknowledgements. And most unfortunately, that didn't happen in my, any of them. Or have they blurb well I'm sure they blurb some but I couldn't find anything it was very difficult on Goodreads anywhere and Google was not helping so I'm going to use a scroll of replacement that my little impling found me for 15 of my guild reputation points to sub it out for another one that I was like I need to read this to keep on schedule and then I realized how many months there actually were till December and I don't but I don't really want to read it in October either I don't know this was a poor decision choice probably but Brandon Sanderson's Oathbringer book three in the Stormlight Archive. And this chunky, chunky, over 1,200 pages, I think, yeah, over 1,200 page book is the last one that I'm going to have to read for this readathon. And I'm Oathbringer. In the third book, we have more of our characters have come together. They recently discovered something at the end of the second book that is changing the perspectives of the world. Only two people really know about this current revelation, but once more people know about it, it's going to, it's going to change things, it's going to change perspectives, and uh, they're reforming the Knights Radiant, and magic is coming back to the world. So many things, so many things to look forward to, and it just so happens that today the cover for Wind and Truth was revealed too, with Dalinar on the cover holding one of the books. I, won't, I don't know which book it is. I don't know which book it is that he's holding, but he's holding one of the books. And it's just so cool. And it's, of course, made by the same cover artist who's done all the other ones, Michael Whalen. And well, um, so this is for all the classes. And we will see if there has to be anything else for, like, little side quests. Oh, dear goodness. I would love to know what you guys are set to read in September. If you are doing the Aurelium Readathon or any of the other ones. I think there are a few other ones happening as well. Just, uh... Is your stack as delusionally ambitious as mine? Delusional. Keyword. Delusional. And if you liked my TBR, you can go check out some of my other videos and see if you like my style and want to subscribe. <laughs> I hope you're having a good day and finding something great to read. Bye.